As soon as you build a campus, immediately build in a library. Because of our divine spark, if we build a library, we go from one great scientist point to three in a single turn. It's an incredibly good move to do. City state is very much helping us, and it's like a like a sort of a war going on here. All the troops are advancing in rank. It's quite cool, actually. And I'm hoping, hoping we're going to win quite comfortably. There's the camp. There's the encampment. We can do this with this camp. Is everybody happy now? Yeah, everybody's happy. It's keeping people happy. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Oh, now they've got archers. How unfair. How unfair. Using my own weapons against me, huh? It's a big turn for us now. We've got engineering, which means we can build baths. We've got recorded history, which means natural philosophy can come in. I'm going to take urban planning off now. We're going to go to campus district adjacency bonus. And this is never going to come off. Natural philosophy will never come off. Icrium definitely will stay on for now. You can see we're getting a little bit more housing. We're getting amenities from the classical republic as soon as we have districts set up. I'm just going to start taking some of these tiles away once we've finished the building because you know you want to actually celebrate the fact that we're done. But here's another settler. This city only has two housing, but very soon the bath will go down, especially because I've got a nice little builder here that's going to immediately come to this wheat and get rid of it which means already I'm a two population city. I'm also going to get grants, plus 100 pe great people points generated per turn in the city. That means that this city once the library is finished, I should be getting six great person points per turn, which means I'm going to start immediately overtaking on great scientists. Now I've got engineering, the next step is I want to get apprenticeship. Apprenticeship means I've got to build lots of mines. That involves getting currency and horseback riding, pastures and trade routes. All of these things, oh, there's not much I can do about particularly. I will just get bronze working and then we'll go, because I've got this civic boost for that one, and then we'll go to apprenticeship again. I'm keeping an eye out the ones that I've done the civic boost or that I could do the civic boost for. Fortunately, there's not many of them for me at the moment. Uh, now that we've got recorded history, however, the next one I want to go to is feudalism. That gives me extra stuff for farms, but it also gives me two extra build actions. And now we can actually start to look ahead to the mid-game and see what civics are going to be most important for us. Feudalism is really important. Extra food from farms, extra builders, slots, or extra sort of charges on builders. These are all fantastic for me. Civil service can sometimes be good if you've got two promotions, you get an extra immunity in housing, but I don't like those sort of things. What it does, because you get rid of the card eventually and then your city's doing really badly and you don't know why. Alliances, however, if I can get an alliance game with the Incans, that could be very profitable for me very quickly, especially later in the game. However, the most important ones I want to go towards are exploration. Merchant Republic, again, we're picking governments with lots of economic policies and lots of wild card slots. This government has two of each, that's four. That's really, really good. It also gives me extra gold, which is always good, and production towards districts, which is fantastic as well. Diplomatic service gives me Visselbanken, one of the best policies in the game. Trade routes to an ally city provide plus two food and plus two production for both cities. If you can get a good ally up, you can use this to very quickly pump cities full of production and food and get them going, getting all of those campuses set up as quickly as you can. The Enlightenment. This is the policy to go for. Rationalism. Extra science from buildings and campuses, plus 50% of the city population is 10 or higher. We've almost got that in our capital already. And 50 if the district has at least three adjacency bonus, which should be every campus we build. Enlightenment is essential. And then civil engineering eventually gives me the public works card, the best builder card in the game. You get extra building production towards builders and newly trained builders get two extra build actions. Both, all of that is very, 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 very good. But for now, I'm going to go towards feudalism to see if I can get that one going up. It means I'm going to have to do a lot of little policies, but that's fine. I think I'm going to treat myself to a two-turn bath. Oh, wonderful. And I'm also getting to the stage of the game where I'm beginning to really pump out settlers now. I'm just moving my units forward slowly just to scout ahead just to see if we've got any barbarian problems. I've got my archers coming in 
they're just gonna sit by and protect all my cities. It should be fine for now. Like everywhere, everywhere can get a bath. This city, we haven't upgraded any of it yet. Housing is only on five of six. Let's have a look and see what a bath does for us. Realistically, we're looking for scientific city-states. These are gonna be the best ones for us, but Mahanjadaro does have fantastic ability, but gives me lots of extra housing, even if I don't settle. So these cities that I'm settling, just at the start, they can naturally grow, but it also gives me an extra point per turn of diplomatic favor, which in turn, I can go to my new friend. In fact, let's just declare friendship, yes. We are now friends with him. I'm now going to just keep selling this all to him. See, it's all good. See what I mean? Plus one, favorable trade deals to them. Makes a big difference. It is the difference between getting friends and not on this game. The bath was no accident. <laughs> I always love how it says that. Anyway, we've got bath going. Rome now is 14 housing. That gave plus four housing and also plus one immunity. Those barb districts, man, they are good. They are very good. In fact, let's we treat ourselves to finishing the campus. From this point of the game, when you're starting to look past your first government, you should be checking in on the science board. We should have more science than everybody else. Now, already I've got 50% more than the Incans, but there are still some people ahead of me. It's normally because you end up beelining a little bit, which gives you a sort of naturally bad look on the score sheet but it's always worth checking in just to see what's happening at this stage of the game as well builders are your friends you need as many builders as you can get because remember the most important thing is to get to 10 population in every city also this campus because it's got three adjacency is now giving me six per turn pretty good right pretty good this will be quite good pop the new city down got everything that I need to be doing for it just now. The builder immediately spawns. I'm just going to put him onto that marsh which already has a road on it. I'm going to use it to completely kill it. There we go. Already the city's on two population which means it's getting two times as much fun so I can immediately build the bath. Done. Honestly if you get into the habit of just selling this every time it cooks up. I mean look at that. I've actually drained them of gold now. Yeah, look, they're starting to actually give me physical gold. That's good. If you get an AI to zero gold, you can actually bankrupt them. It can really, really slow them down. It's a it's a cruel, but quite effective strategy. And again, now that these baths are beginning to set up, you can see we're getting to a point where we're gonna start getting some decent campus yields. Plus four. That's a plus eight campus. Get that down immediately. Always remember to trade luxuries as well. As soon as you get bonuses, those immediately need to be sent away. So 58 gold, what What would it take for this? 50, oh, there's a, they value their luxuries to be worth a lot more than ours. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I want all of your money. How much political power have I got to give you two? I've bankrupted them. Now that they are bankrupt, they are inefficient. I'm also just gonna quickly purchase in my library. Now that I've got a bit flush with gold, that's all looking good. I've now got lots of scientist points coming in per turn. 6.9 already, and that's purely from that one city. Um, we're doing good, actually. Great scientists. Oh, you see, that one was taken. Unfortunately, we didn't get quite on the ball fast enough, but we've got enough scientist points coming in now to be a real issue going forward into the game. As I say, if you ever have spare production, you should be building builders almost continually. Like, it, it is so much of it. it, it may look like a really stupid thing just to improve this tile, which is rubbish, but that, that's a rubbish tile that is in all likelihood being worked. Okay, that one isn't as a bad example, but like all of these tiles, that one's being worked, for instance. So just improving this is a huge deal. And the housing, the housing is so important. You have to just improve everything. Just if in doubt, improve it. And should we also get some extra culture in, in the city? And if I do, it's an extra six culture per turn. It's good, and the city's happy. The city's very happy. Very, very happy. In fact, actually, look, immunities are doing good. Plus two, plus food, plus two, plus two. We're happy. What does that mean? Well, it means we're getting an extra 5% non food yield. I'm in an ecstatic city. I believe it's 10%. Yeah, there we go. It makes a big difference in the long run. Already up to nine great scientist points per turn. Getting there, getting there slowly. 
You'll notice I'm not yet building commercial hubs or theatre squares. There's a good reason for that. I'm waiting until industrial zones come out. As soon as I've got those, I can realistically sort of beeline into everything. And the capital, it's just very, very happily ticking along and just producing saddles for me. I've got my fifth one already about to make its way out. And at that point, I have to actually start looking at the map and thinking, where else? What else can I do to get a little bit more science coming in? Now in Aquilia, I realistically want to be building a campus on top of that sheep. So I've got a builder coming over again to harvest it. There's nothing wrong with harvesting bonus shields. It can actually be a very effective strategy. And I found another city-state. Interesting, two culture city-states. Now, if you remember me saying, it's worth taking a look at those sort of important or, or like optional uh, districts. Theatre Square's iPad is important. And now we found two, two districts that is gonna give me a digital, two city-states I should say, that'll give me a culture bonus. It becomes even more important. Theatre squares are now a very realistic and very important thing that I should consider getting. Scythia. Scythia is never particularly fun to have next to us, but where, where would Scythia be? Did she find us? She found us, she found a boat. That's good. I mean, she's on a different island. <laughs> Intriguingly though, it means that I've got a couple more trade options to look at now. Zero gold. You see, look, Inca. Inca is on zero. That means probably they're bankrupt. Uh, they, they don't suffer from it as much as we do, but it's always fun. You can actually limit a computer's growth by making them bankrupt. Scythia, on the other hand, is not bankrupt. And also, I can sell my iron to them. As soon as you get strategic resources, unless you're using them, sell them. Like immediately 14 gold per turn. You are welcome. I'm also just going to give them a 30 gold gift. Give gift. Hopefully that means, there we go. They had an unknown reason. In fact, I'm just going to give them a little bit more. Uh, let's give them the full 35 gift. Now, hopefully that means, there we go. Look, their opinion of us at the beginning is now positive. I'm hoping that means we can send a delegation to them and get them on board nice and quickly. We've just finished apprenticeship. Let's see what we ridiculous industrial zones we can start getting to go immediately now here's the thing i want to put the industrial zone here for this city there's a plus five adjacency there wow <laughs> that's ridiculous because of these two strategic resources oh i see but what i can do is if i just quickly swap this tile into that city i can now see what that bonus would be. That would also be a plus five. That's an intriguing one. That's an intriguing one. That means I can leave this city for something else later. Is that gonna get me better? I've got the plus two from here. I've got the three, I've got the four, five. So it could get to plus six here. Sod it. I'm gonna put it there instead. Change your plan. If you've got a better option, do it. In fact, I might even be able to put the Ruhr Valley down on this one. I'm not sure. I haven't worked it out that far yet. There we go. A plus seven yield. Told you. Told you baths were good. Just got, I'm switching them all over to making industrial zones. Trust me, it's worth it. Because if you don't do that, you won't get the production in the later stage of the game. And I've also got my first great design test. There you go. Let's get some more Eurekas. Education. Education has just been done. That's good. That's a fantastic one. So let's see what we get. Medieval fairs. That's good. Metal casting. Good. Banking. All, all civics. In reality, we weren't likely to get any time soon. So that works quite nicely for us, actually. Just something I noticed as well. I actually have five farms down. So let's just quickly build a farm. And there you go. I'm going to boost feudalism. And then immediately switch out this builder card. There we go. To serfdom extra two build actions per oh, this is good you can see it all starts to sort of accumulate now quite nicely stirrups it's all everything's being boosted fantastic so as mentioned now i've got feudalism i'm going to go down to civil service we can get an alliance set up as quickly as possible it gets more diplomatic favor every turn it all helps to build it up now i wrote down a little something about city states before we started I wrote down a little list of the best ones to look for. Scientific city-states are the most important to go for on a science playthrough. 
The more scientific city states you get, the better. However, we haven't found any, so we go to number two. But actually, there's a good there's a few things to mention here. There's a, with scientific city states, there's three. Three that you really want to get. Bologna slash Stockholm, depending on whether you have the expansion, I'm assuming you are. That gives you plus one great person point per district with a building. Now that stacks amazingly with campuses to make sure that you win every single great scientist in the game. It's brilliant. Geneva gives you 50% science, 15% science if you're not at war, which hopefully you shouldn't be. And Palink, Palinki, I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm very sorry, gives you extra growth to cities with campuses, which should be all of them. However, if you cannot get scientific city states, you do two things. Firstly, you look for themes. If there's lots of the same type, like in this case, I've got two theater square city states. I want to go for those. Otherwise, there are three city states that are brilliant. Firstly, Zanzibar is a merchantile city state. It gives you cinnamon and cloves, which give one amenity each to six cities. It is incredible. That's 12 amenities. It will make you so happy, and that will in turn give you a plus 10% science bonus from all of your ecstatic cities. Secondly, Hong Kong is an industrial city state that gives you 20% towards city projects, aka scientist stuff like sending something to space. The third one, hilariously, that I'd written down was Antananarivo. I cannot pronounce it, but it's that. That gives you plus 2% culture for every great person you have ever earned. That is huge. That, that is absolutely massive as a bonus. Even if you're just getting great scientists, that's immediately good. Already, that would be giving me sort of 4 or 5 culture per turn, and it's, it's just every turn. It stacks and stacks and stacks. It is brilliant.